Hello everybody, I'm Nick and yep, you read the title right. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can do messaging with Redis. And you might be thinking, why on earth would I want to do that? Because Redis is a key value pair distributed cache. Why and how can I even do messaging with it? Well, in this video, we're going to see not only how you can do it, because yes, you can do pub sub messaging with Redis, but also I'm going to show you why you probably should be using this because part of these messaging capabilities allow us to react on changes on Redis, which is a critical part of any application that is doing caching. Let me show you what I have here. I have two applications, a consumer and a publisher, and they're both just simple console applications. They don't really have anything in them. And I'm going to start straight with the publisher. So what I want to have here is I want to say publish a message into Redis. That's it, because Redis can actually do that. Redis has a pub sub capability where you can use a channel and you can push things into a channel and then subscribe to the channel and consume whatever you push in there as messages. Now to do that, we will need to install the stackexchange.redis NuGet package. And I'm also going to run a Docker image of Redis over here, which I will use another Redis desktop manager to be able to quickly see what's going on. And as you can see here, my Redis instance is running and it doesn't really have anything in it is just empty. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to bring in a connection string, which is the local host that Redis is running on right now on my machine, and then a channel name. Channel is where we're going to be publishing a subscribing to consume. And the name I'm going to use here, and you can define any name, is messages. Then I'm going to go ahead and say that I'm going to grab a connection using the connection multiplexer. So I'm going to say connect, and I'm going to say Here's the connection string. Go ahead and connect to Redis, basically. And then I'm going to become a subscriber. So I'm going to say connection dot get subscriber. And I have this subscriber object. And I'm going to say while true. So I'm going to have sort of an endless loop to showcase how I can push messages into Redis. And because I need some object to push into Redis, I'm going to also create a Redis message over here as a record. And then I'm going to say console dot write Nick, so to give a, an experience, sort of like a chat, as if I'm saying something, and then I'm going to say text equals console dot read line, just to read the line I will type in the console. Then we're going to have a quick null check, and then all I need to do is create a message, this instance of this record I have over here, just a new ID, and then serialize the message as JSON, because I want to write it in the channel as text. And then all I'm going to say is await subscriber dot publish async and I'm going to write in the channel which I have the channel name here I'm going to write the message and the message here is the JSON I'm pushing and that is it now if I go ahead and I simply run my publisher what you're going to see is I'm going to have a sort of a console experience over here and let's write something hello world and nothing happens because we don't have a consumer so let's go ahead and create a consumer too and also fix this because it's going to give me OCD. So on the consumer side of things, same thing as before, connection multiplexer, connection string, and channel name, same channel name. And I'm also going to create that Redis message record. But now I'm just going to have like a consumer started listening from messages in that specific channel after the channel name. And all I need to subscribe is say await subscriber dot subscribe async. Very straightforward. Then I'm going to pass down the channel name and then I'm going to have the two parameters I'm going to get notified on, which is the channel and then the incoming message, which is Redis value, the same sort of object we push and then Redis channel. Now, all I'm going to say is message equals JSON serializer dot deserialize async Redis message. And then I'm going to get the incoming message and I'm going to convert it into, well, what I pushed. And then I'm going to say console dot write line and then string interpolation received message from channel. I'm going to use the channel over here and then I'm going to just write the message, which because it's a record has a two string method that's overridden. So we're going to get a nice pretty view uh, of what is in here. And that's it. So just so this doesn't actually exit, I'm going to say console dot read key. So we need to press a key for this application to exit. And if I just run the consumer, remember, we pushed a message before. As you can see, we don't get that message in here. That's because Redis doesn't actually store any messages in the same way that if you push something in a topic and there is no subscriber, no subscribing queue, no subscribing anything to consume it, it will be basically disposed. Redis works the same way. 
which gives you an idea of the use case here. This is more about messaging or sort of eventing PubSub that you don't really care if you lose a few messages. And there are use cases like this. For example, I'm using Figma to create all the posts I have on LinkedIn or where I send something through my newsletter, which by the way, if you like blogs more than videos, you can get a link down below. I post blogs there too. And when I'm editing this, other collaborators can come here and see my cursor moving around. So something like this can be done with a real-time connection, like for example, Signal R or just any other web sockets, but it can also be done with something like this. Or you can use something like this for something like Uber, for example, where when you want to see when your Uber is coming and it only updates every 10 seconds or so, you can basically push a message every 5 or 10 seconds in a Redis channel and then consume it on the consuming app every 5 or 10 seconds and you will see the car moving gradually towards your location and you don't care if you miss one of those spots because you can interpolate the route that this taxi took. So when persistence doesn't matter and you basically want an in-memory quick way of doing distributed messaging, that is a great use case. And if I go and I run the publisher now too, what you're going to see is I accidentally pressed the wrong button, but if I say hello world, if I could type, then as you can see in the consumer, we received it immediately and I can keep doing this. And as you're going to see very, very fast, very, very nice, we consumed all of those messages. And that's fine. And there's a use case for that. But with the exact same principle, what you can do is you can actually get notified from a channel on changes that happen in Redis. What do I mean? Well, if someone sets a cache value, you can get that action as a notification. If a value expires and you want to act on that cache expiration, you can act on it. Update, you can act on it. Even if someone explicitly says expire this value, you can listen to that as an event and act on it. How? Well, let me show you. Now, before I move on, I'd like to let you know that we just released two brand new courses on Dome Train called From Zero to Hero Git and From Zero to Hero GitHub Actions. And they're two amazing courses authored by Scott Sober, who's extremely experienced in both topics. Now, you might think you know those topics, but trust me, the way Scott teaches them and the way he has dedicated sections on how to deal with things going wrong on each topic is extremely, extremely valuable. As I was reviewing it, I learned so much myself. Now, to celebrate the launch, the first 200 of you can use discount code GIT30 at checkout to get 30% off. Now, back to the video. First, what you have to do is actually enable that feature. So, in Redis, I'm going to go here and I'm going to access the CLI. And what I'm going to say on my Redis instance is config set notify key space events. And I'm going to specify K E a so basically notify me for any key events i'm gonna go ahead and set that and say okay and now what i can do is i can use a very specific channel name convention to subscribe to key changes let's say i want to only subscribe to when a key expires from the cache what can i do for that well i can say underscore underscore key event at then the database number, by default we're using zero, so I'm going to say database zero, and then underscore, underscore, colon, expired, because I only care about expired. I could listen to expire, so when someone uses the expire command, I can use set as well. I can use everything to get notified for everything. Let's just say I want to get notified on uh, expired. So I'm just going to set that, and then at the very beginning, I'm going to say var db equals connection dot get database and then i'm going to say await db dot string set async and i'm going to say key ping and value pong and i can say time span dot from seconds five so basically set the value pong or key ping and then expire it in five seconds i'm going to remove this uh, serialization over here because it might break it and i'm just going to print the incoming message as it is. Let's go ahead and just run the consumer, which will set a value which will expire in five seconds after it's being set. Nothing up my sleeves. We're going to just count for one more second. And now, as you can see, received message from channel whatever expired and we get the key, which is ping. Knowing the key of the expired value 
if we do our key incorrectly, it can give us incredible information regarding what was expired, so we can act on it. If a cash value is expired, you might need to trigger something to rehydrate the cash. If it's updated, you might need to update something down the line. So having the ability to do something like this, which by the way, like I said, can work on anything as well. So I can say subscribe for everything. And I'm going to do my setting now after I subscribed my subscriber. So if I do that and I go and I say run the consumer again, not only will I get the expiration, but I have the set because we set a value. We also use the expire command because we said that thing that we just set will also expire and the notification on the expired. You can get any action that you want, which is extremely, extremely powerful. So not only can you do really, really cool messaging, but you can also act on it. Not many people know that, but so many people use Redis. So I think this is an amazing feature. And I know what some of you will say in the comments down below. Well, Redis is no longer open source and we're going to have to start moving away from it soon. That's sort of true and not. And we will see in a future video, if you want, leave a comment down below, how Garnet, a project by Microsoft that is way faster than Redis and also has a Redis adapter can help us overcome all that closed source stuff. But now I wonder from you, did you know about this feature and are you using it? If yes, leave a comment down below letting me know how you're using it. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching and as always, keep coding.